Hey folks, this clip is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Visit omahasteaks.com and type in promo code VOLS, that's V-O-L-S, at checkout to fill your freezer with enough gourmet food to keep your cookouts going strong into the fall. That is omahasteaks.com, promo code VOLS. All right, we are back with another uh, VFL guest here, another former Vol. Uh, and this one, we, we had Jabari Davis last week. We're switching to basketball this week, and we are going to talk a little bit of basketball, even though it's everybody's still in football mode. We, we know, we know, but we got <laughs> the ultimate hype man for Tennessee sports in general on with us right now. One of the best ever hit the hardwood for the Vols, Ron slay is with us what's up ron man what's happening fellas man glad to be on with you guys dude um congrats too man you guys out here man walking the red carpet getting big time awards uh, a to Z. i see y'all out here man i uh, see you i mean all 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 credit to to austin and zach they're yeah they're the brains behind the whole thing we're just here <laughs> you know helping out but uh i i do have to be honest ron this is a little bit of a uh i i'm kind of geeking out because I, I, I got to tell you, when I was a kid, I wore a yeah. headband when I played basketball as a little uh, when I was young because of you. You were like the you you won uh, SEC player of the year in 03. I think you you were all American, right, too, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. dude, it's so cool to have you on. But <laughs> I just just to get right to it, I don't even know if the people know Tennessee has an exhibition charity exhibition game coming up this weekend. Yeah. Uh, you have visited with the team and and seen them. What are you thinking about this year's basketball team? Man, I think this is a um, a team that's going to be really fun to watch. I mean, like all of Coach Barnes' teams seem to have um, some tangible likeness to them. You know, people, the fans get to to watching them, and as the season grows on, they always say, "Man, man, this is my favorite team. This is my favorite team." And I think you're going to see that with this team coming out the gate. Um, you know. You with, with how deep they are, I think it's going to shock people. You know how deep they can go and how many different styles of play they'll be able to play as far as going big, going small, um, switching it up, and just being aggressive in the guard play, the bigs. I, I I love it, man. I love it. I think this is finally getting back to that foundation core where you got four seniors, um, upperclassmen that are kind of the leaders. You know what I'm saying? Um, and also kind of throwing Zakai in that, that bunch, even though he's a sophomore, he's a guy, man, that had so much experience playing on the big stage and delivering. So he's, he, I mean, he's really not a sophomore. The man's like a junior, you know what I'm saying? He got a, yeah. he got a voice of a, um, a, of a, a, a fifth year senior anyway, with that deep voice, but he, you know what I mean? But his play, man, is, is, is much more light years of, ahead of being just a sophomore. So, going to be interesting there's a lot of things that we're going to be able to dive into dog that it's it's promising it's promising you know i'm really excited about this season and i i love everything that's happened with football it's been one of the greatest joys the last 20 years what's happening right now but at the end of the day i'm definitely a basketball guy as i kind of mentioned uh at my foundation and the best thing that rick barnes has done in his entire time is just he has kentucky by the short hairs man and it's yeah. so and it's kentucky week yeah to to you i mean how how great is that to watch him do that and have their number like that <laughs> hey man i love it man and to all my 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 K- kentucky friends and you know people that's in my in my um uh, my, my roller decks man they know i refer to them as kentucky this week when we match up with them so <laughs> you know what i mean i take the t out and the T, the only T is the T that we rock. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to even give them that pleasure of being able to have a power T in their name like that. So, you know what I mean? I take that, I put the S in there, you know, and combine Kentucky and Suck and all that, and then you got Kentucky. But outside of that, man, you love it, man. Whenever you can be competitive um, against a, a traditional powerhouse, you know, blue uh, 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 a blue blood school, like they are, man. Like I, I poke a lot of fun at them, but the reason I do is because I understand the tradition and I understand the championships. I understand the history of it. And to be right there mentioned on that same level, when you talk about them walking into Thompson Bowling or us walking in the rock, and it's going to be a game. You know what I'm saying? And um, even if one of them is a blowout, you can damn well believe, man, on the next game, <laughs> they're going to blow them out. So it's, it's, it's even, and I love that, man. I love that. You know, you got the guys – 
it's a it's a factor of pride that you walk around with you know that boundary right there on the state line it means something once you cross over into tennessee and it means something for them in the bluegrass state so um i, I love what coach barnes done um he embodies on what his players are and they do the same for him uh, one of the like really cool things over the last couple of years that, that we've noticed, especially over the last year, is like the synergy at Tennessee right now between all the different athletic programs. You hear, you see Kelly Harper narrating a video mm-hmm. for the football team, or Tony Vitello on on College Game Day. Um, it's something that seemed like it was missing like the last ten years, kind of before Danny White popped up. Does it remind you of your days at Tennessee, or how was it whenever you were whenever you were playing? Without question. You know, when people ask about what was my the greatest and my fondest experience about being at the University of Tennessee, I always reach back to say how intertwined all of the sports were, how much support it was. Like I came along. Um, the reason I committed was because I was my, my unofficial visit was the 98 Florida game oh. when <laughs> when Tennessee beat them. Wow. So um, that I, I left that game saying, hey. Coach, I was telling Coach Smith on our way back to Oak Hill, hey, man, call them, tell them I'm ready to sign them all. I don't even forget that verbal commitment and all that. But, you know, coming off of that, the the Lady Vols, that just won a national championship. Then you got the football team. Then you got the Jerry Green taking over and the basketball team going to different – I mean, going to the tournament consistently. And um, baseball was the same way, you know, with Javi Herrera and those guys. We were good friends with them. So – Man, it was it was a family, man. Like you could easily walk into Gibbs um and in, in, in the cafeteria, see football guys sitting with baseball, baseball sitting with with basketball, and then also with, with the women's sports. Like we went to I remember going to Stokely and going to support the volleyball team. You know what I'm saying? Being front row when the Lady Vols playing La Tech and screaming, you know what I'm saying? Like that's what it is. And I ask everybody, even on my podcast on the Boom Boom Room, when I have people on like Shamika Hose Claw and things like that, like, what was your memory? And they say the same thing. So you know it was something special. You know, and when they when they say um it was funny, it just happened to be this week, Kentucky comes out and says it's a basketball school. We embodied, you see Danny White, Josiah Jordan James, I'll say, man, we're everything school. And that's what it is. When you're thriving like that together and supporting each other, that that's it, man. And it's it's easy to flow that way. It's easy to support. It's easy for the fans to get involved, the student athletes to feel involved, the students themselves to feel involved. Then it just pours out into the population. And it's like, oh, man, we got something special. And that's, 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 that's most definitely um, a feel of the 90s, early 2000s for me. God, that's so good to hear. Just being, being out in the wilderness <laughs> all of that time. It's, it's nice to be getting that back. I. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you're a, bet, you're a basketball guy, but you talk on the radio every day on 3HL, 104.5 in Nashville about uh, Titans and everything else that yeah. happens, and, and you know specifically Tennessee football for our purposes. Um, what are you seeing this week with Kentucky? Looks like a pretty tough matchup coming up, but Tennessee should be the better team. What, what are you thinking going into this one? Yeah, man, um, Kentucky, when they um, come up on Rocky Top, man, it's going to be different. You know what I'm saying? I, I think one thing that's getting left out outside of, you know, the, the quarterbacks, these these two working their way up, you know, Levis came into the preseason being touted as the number one quarterback to be taken in the NFL. Um, so his stock was all the way up. And then what Hendon has done leading into this season, um, you you, you see the the skill guys out there on the boundaries, Barry and Brown, Robinson for Kentucky. And then you got um, Tillman, you got Hyatt, you got Brew, Keaton, the, the list goes on and on, even Princeton Fent. So you got those guys doing what they do. But for me, it's the trenches. It's the trenches on both sides of the ball. Um, both not talked about highly coming into the season, but um, I – I think as the season goes along and the record improves, you see exactly what's going on. Rodney Garner doing a terrific job with those guys, not only the front four that he has playing, but the backups. I think that's important. Like you getting guys, Roman Harrison and those guys getting in there to get opportunities. You're like, whoa, where they, where would they, why wouldn't they, would they mention? So um, I, I think that's a, a big salute to them for that. And then on the offensive line, Carvin and man, Mays and, uh, Mincy, all the uh, everybody, Spragans, everybody on the line, man, doing a terrific job. And one thing you've had on your side so far is health. 
You know what I mean? You got it in these runs. I think something that gets overlooked when people say you need luck. Health is in luck as well. If you can get that going, you got something. So I think that's that's what can can suck you coming into it does not know what to expect, you know, with this offensive line. I think they have a great defensive front, um, especially their linebackers. Um, but one thing about it with this spread formation, those linebackers, as deep as they are in Kentucky, they don't really get to get the opportunity to play because if you do, you create matchups that is going to be in Tennessee's favor. So um, that's that's one. And the second thing, man, mostly outside of the trenches, the mystique to Neyland. I I don't like I've been <laughs> I've been on the train and, and pumping it up and telling people like leading up to the Alabama game, the Florida game, like they don't understand what they're walking into. So you got people on the edge dying for something to cheer for dying. And now you got a product out there bleeding over from last year, the excitement of it and now winning. And now you really honestly have an unstoppable force in the offense. You know what I'm saying? That's going to get that, like, it's not the defense that's going to stop. It's going to be the miscues of the, the errant passes and things like that that stops them. The fans are feeding off of it. So the mystique of kneeling is back and the fans cheering is deafening. I mean, deaf, like you can't even hear the band playing at times. That's amazing. Proud of the Southland band. It's a lot of, but uh, compared to 102,000 screaming fans, it drowns them out every time. And they have to deal with that. The opponents have to deal with that, man. And it's no longer walking into kneeling and going straight to the locker room. You come out and you get your, you get your warm-ups on, the skill guys. Now you're walking out of that locker room and you're looking up. You know what I mean? you like, turn this an hour and a half before the game and it's packed. During that 90% full, that's different. That's different. So you factor those two things. The trenches, man things that haven't been talked about and the mystique of kneeling being back. And I think it, it, uh, Kentucky's in for a rude awakening, man. Honestly, I, I, I was thinking early in the season, this could be a close game. I honestly don't think, I, I don't think it's going to be close. I think it's double digits easily in this game. From tailgate parties to busy weeknights, the flavor experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to savor all the flavors of fall with their mouthwatering assortments of perfectly aged steaks, ultra juicy burgers, and easy to prepare comfort meals that are ready in a flash. Right now, take advantage of 50% off site wide by shopping their semi annual sale. The sale only happens twice a year and it is on right now. Now you get 50% off delicious customer favorites. And when you use promo code VOLS, that is V-O-L-S at checkout, you get an additional $30 off your order. And guys, I've now had, uh, I've had the burgers, I've had the Franks, I've had the chicken from Omaha Steaks. It is all phenomenal. It comes in this great freezer packed way right to your door. Incredibly convenient. Uh, I, I can't say enough about it, honestly. So don't wait. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter Vols at checkout and stock up on fall flavor today. Omaha Steaks is perfect for those chilly and busy fall nights with entrees that are ready before the kids can even say what's for dinner. And don't forget to use the promo code Vols at checkout and score your extra $30 off. Omaha Steaks isn't just steak. It is the best steak of your life guaranteed. That's omahasteaks.com. Promo code VOLS at checkout. Minimum order may be required. Omaha Steaks. Promo code VOLS. There's uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about as soon as I heard it. I think it was yesterday. I knew we were going to have you on. We know all about Hendon Hooker and the Heisman campaign and what a great leader he is off the field and a great teammate and just mm -hmm. does everything the right way. Yesterday, he said that he thinks he's the best basketball player on the team. He models his game after Penny Hardaway. I just wonder if you had any thoughts on, on when he said that. Man, we got to talk to him SEC Media Day, man. You know, that was the first thing I said to him. I wasn't sure if he knew who I was, but I was going to make sure I introduced myself to him and let him know, hey, man. I, but I do see the basketball inside of him. You know, and it's funny that you heard Heifel and them come out and say, man, they wanted him to go out there and have fun like he's playing basketball. So they related to him. And in other words, man, you're going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups and in the open field. Protect the ball, but, dude, get your you, – juke on. Like, cross over. Do you, and this is the thing. I would love to catch Hendon on the, on the, on the um, basketball court because I would have told him, man, listen, that little slow spin you got, 
That ain't nothing because that spin is extremely slow. I just want people <laughs> to know that on the basketball court, if you do that little slow spin, man, they're gonna pluck that from behind. They're going the other way, dunk it. But it's cool on the football field because they're not expecting it. But yeah, man, you you can see it, man. It, it's um the way he carries his body when he's running, um, knowing when to get down. That's a little bit. That's that's basketball right there. Avoiding hits, avoiding contact, avoiding defenders. That's all the motion of basketball. So. Um, you, you can see it pouring out a little bit, man. You can, you can see it pouring out. I've talked to a lot of former players in my time doing Tennessee media and across the board, the dudes from those uh, teams in the late, late nineties, basketball, football, anything, the, yeah. the dudes that were from some of the great teams, they always talk about athlete leadership being massive mm-hmm. in terms of their success. And you you've heard it so much. It's specifically about Hooker. Mm-hmm. You just heard his leadership is massive on this team. Can can you speak to that and what what you've seen and the impact that that might have? Yeah, I think I think it's not only with him. I think he is the the, the spearhead of it. Like he spearheads this entire thing by um, by being able to communicate with guys and being able to guys being able to uh, take constructive criticism from him and also be able to give it to him. I've seen a couple of games this year where, like, when he's missing on some things, especially at the Pittsburgh game, um, Tillman was looking at him like, hey, man, come on, dog. Like, you missing me wide open, you know, and then go back to the sideline. Tillman get on to him. He accept that, come back out, you know what I mean, hit him on the dart, and then you see them embrace. You know what I mean? That's something di- built differently. That's off the field that's able to carry on. And also guys coming into the program being able to have a voice. I think you see it a lot in basketball. We heard it a lot last year with um, Coach Barnes and the guys, uh, Zakai and, you know, guys like freshmen being able to have a voice. That was a, that was a, a newbie to them. Usually you hear seniors and that's it talking. And I think all of these coaches talk. What helps your program be successful is everybody having a voice. So I think you're getting the same thing in football. When Hypo came in, Danny White came in, he, he looked and told these guys he wanted to meet with them. So right then and there, this ain't no two, three minute meeting. This is an hour meeting. We forcing y'all to talk. So that carries over from the hiring of a Josh Hypo. Hypo coming in, being introduced to these young men and him standing up there at the podium and telling them, hey, man, y'all got to talk. What aren't y'all happy about? Like, this ain't no dictatorship, man. Everybody got a voice in this. And I think it's carried over from that all the way to this season. And everybody can speak up, even the guys transferring in like Wesley Walker, you know, coming from Georgia Tech. Like them being able to come in and feel comfortable is when you can be able to speak comfortably. And it's, I think it all comes from the film room and it's just bleeding over into the field, man. So salute to all of them for um, being able to take constructive criticism and give it at the same time and hyper for opening that door for everyone to be able to have a voice. Uh, what do you, speaking of Danny White, uh, how do you feel about him so far compared to when he got hired? Did you have any – did you know much about him from his time at UCF? I mean, I know he was kind of out there with the whole undefeated thing and yeah. was in, in the headlines for that. <laughs> but did you expect anything different than what he's done so far or, or the direction of the program under him? Man, honestly, I um I, I was open-minded when he got there. Um, I did a, some research, and I was always a fan of – I got some partners that I played um, basketball with um, – as a pro overseas and they were from Buffalo and I was always um, uh, admiring what guys like Hurley did up there. And then Nate Oates came and did. And I was, it was like, who's first of all, who's hiring these guys? You know what I'm saying? And you go and watch me like turn. Okay. So you're looking at his resume. So everything I was watching with Buffalo, when I was watching basketball, he was the architect behind that, you know? And then when he gets down to UCL, you start to follow it a little bit. I uh, like what Scott Frost was doing and then to be able to go plug and put hype in. And then, so when he came, it all made me reminisce about what I was watching before and put it in, in place. So I did a little bit more digging and man, this whole darn family is <laughs> ADs and things like that. It's like the man's been groomed for this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And if he don't get it right, imagine Thanksgiving or going home for the weekend, man, they're going to be on his head, man, because <laughs> it, it's competitive. So um, I, I am, I am happy for where he has the program. I think him, Chancellor Plowman also, they do a great job of feeding off of each other. And this dude, I'm energized. Um, I've yet to I've yet to see him, whether it's seven in the morning at a tailgate or late in the evening or on a phone call the next day after a big win, his energy is always there. 
energy is always there. So um, it's it, the excitement you see in the program. You, you talk about it as co- players to coaches, how they mirror what the coach is. You see the program mirroring what Danny White is. Excitement, energy. Like, what's the next thing? Let's get to it. You know, there is no no. Um, we're listening to people. Like, you talk about hypo and the players having a voice. The fans have a voice. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, Danny White's listening to that. So, you, you got to love it, man. You got to love it. I was, I, was, I was happy when the hire took place. Um, wasn't sure if all nation was gonna give him an opportunity. <laughs> we, were too, we were toxic, you know. What I mean, it, it was difficult to deal with. We were running people in and out of there, but I'm glad. I'm glad he came in and he struck struck gold pretty quick. And um, now now he's got the equity built up. So if he were to make a mistake, I think he'd be all right. It, it's kind of surprising to me that it's taken this long for an AD to listen to fans that way. I mean, they put the, the Vols letters back in Neyland. Yeah. Yeah, playing Dixieland Delight after the mm-hmm. Alabama game is just l- listening to fans works wonders. It does, man. Like, if, if you got anybody to have your back when things go in shambles, it's the fans that's going to lift you back up. So mm-hmm. it's like, why wouldn't you listen? And it's, of course, there's gonna be some that's outrageous with outrageous um, things that they won't done. But oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of them are simple, small things that they will ask. Like the VOLS letters, like that's that's small and simple, man. That can change the the the, the frown from a smile to mm-hmm. a smile. It's like do that, and that's what it is, man. He, he he's doing a great job of doing it. Listen, absolutely. Uh, final question here for you. All right, let you go. Uh, you think Tennessee is going to beat Kentucky? You gotta yeah, I like how you their, said that. Got to call them by their correct name. Yeah, you are right. Uh, rest of the season, got Georgia. Mm-hmm. And then potentially, if you beat them, SEC championship, college football playoff, is Hypel going to do it? How how uh, How's the rest of the season going to go? Man, um, from a fan perspective, um, we're going to be looking ahead. You know what I mean? We can't wait to get to Georgia. We can't wait. To, then we can't wait to handle that and then go spank up on South Carolina out there. You know, that's, they got a great stadium, great atmosphere. Spank them up, go spank up candy um, down here in Nashville. It's a lot of things we want to take care of, man. But I, I will say this, man. Hypel is doing a terrific job, and I feel with these guys who have never won and experienced anything like this, keeping them focused on the game at hand because they actually don't know what it's like to win. They really – We've been losing so long, they really can't look ahead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got they gotta focus on the task at hand. So, man, I think, man, we handle business this weekend, um, and then go on and and, and show up for this, this showdown in Georgia and in, in between the hedges, man. And that's gonna be a battle. Um, I don't I don't believe Georgia can score with us, um, but I don't them tight ends tight ends have given us a problem for some reason all year and they got three of them <laughs> you know what i'm saying i don't know if it's the size the speed the scheme whatever it is but tight ends have been a problem this year so it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out man can we get enough stops um i know they can't stop us but it's always something i tell people this all the time that tennessee georgia rivalry even though it's kind of uh, brushed under the table a little bit when we're really good they always got our number if they're really good, we always got their number and somehow can figure a way to make it a game or upset them. This time you got both of them walking in at the peak. So it's going to be a showdown for the ages, I believe, man. So I'm ready. I'm ready for it. But I do think I do think we get to we get to Atlanta, make some noise and get in that college football playoff, man. And that's just me, honestly speaking, man. I, I think this what we're seeing with this team, you got to liken it when you look at numbers and stuff. And I'm not a big number guy. I'm an eye test guy. You look at what Joe Joe Burrow and them did at LSU, and you can't say it's far far from that. So, you know, what I mean, I, I I think we roll, man. I think we roll. Was there any part of you that that thought it was possible? Just real quick before we go, before the season started, that this would be where Tennessee's at. Before point? the season started, no. Um, I was I was thinking if you can get two of the three, um, and you can go and finish. Now I did write down our predictions, um, at the at the station. And I, I shared them on the whiteboard, but we all wrote our predictions down. And I, I'm close. I ain't far off. <laughs> I ain't far off. I actually only had them losing two. So um, they far ahead, and I'm cool with it. And oh, yeah. I did think, though, if Hendon Hooker could come into it and master this scheme of what Hypo has, he could go. If you saw him scheming people open, 
with scripted plays the first 10, 15 plays of the game last year. Imagine a whole offseason. And I think that's what we're getting to see. And it's opening up more and more each week, you know what I mean, with Fant getting shuffle passes and, uh, and then, you know, going in eye formation, being a fullback. And it's, it's so much more that we haven't even seen. I thought LSU was the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg. You know, fourth down, and you bring Fant in motion, and then you get everybody pulling one way, and you give it to him underneath for a first down. I was like, whoa. I never saw that coming. I thought it was going to be a crack back, get the, get the running back out there in, in, in space and let him get the first down. So, hey, man, Hypo is able, because of his staff, your props to his staff, he can focus on scheming up things and just being open on offense. So, anything, sky's the limit. I, I hope you're right. I, I don't even know if I can handle it if they actually. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this right now. I already told them yesterday. Now, we go on. Win this SEC championship, then go on and win a national championship. I'm praying that Allison, our boss, Paul Mason, the program director, have mercy on me. Because <laughs> what I may do, it may not be right. But I'm asking <laughs> for forgiveness early. You know what I mean? Hey, man, it's going to be a fun time, boy. I'm telling uh. you that. God, I hope Tennessee's so. got to win it now, just so we can see. That. I, exactly. <laughs> if, if for nothing else, I want to see what Ron does. I mean, it's yeah. gonna be crazy. I ain't no telling. I don't know. That's what's even wilder. <laughs> I mean, I, I I even like on on this show, I I do a, a game day show with Jonathan Crompton, the yeah, O nine quarterback. Uh huh. And I mean, I came on there, shirt off, cigar in hand, <laughs> just for the Alabama game. I was like, if they win a national championship, it's going to be all bets are off. I hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, I can't wait. But I tell you what, man, I already told them, man, listen, I'm starting the Artifact Museum. I want y'all to be a part of it. I'm going on at the end of the at the end of the year by January after everything's done, man. I already collected um, a Panther skin coat. I've already collected gator boots and um, a gator belt. I got a Mike the Tiger tooth in storage. Um, I now have an elephant tusk that um, I'm holding on to. <laughs> Um, and now, now hey, I, I'm out here going for some. I, I got I'm looking for kitty cats, you know. I'm gonna put them <laughs> in a little kennel. Um, some little kitty cats, let them run around. I'm gonna feed them well. I got some people at the pet stores, so I'm gonna take care of them well. Then we go get a little bulldog. We'll worry about ugging them later. But I'm telling you, I'm gathering things, man. I'm I'm, I'm unleash. Well, oh, you have to get a rooster later in the year. That's gonna be kind of. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't even worry. I'm, I'm, don't worry. I'll get Roy Jones Jr. He he like to do cockfighting, so I'm gonna go get him to get it. <laughs> I'm going I'm to get him sponsor for us a site, and we're going to go get one of them. No need to trip. <laughs> can't, can't wait to see it. But uh, before you before we head out, plug plug everything. 3HL, Boom Boom Room. Yeah, all, man, all 3HL, all. man, every day from 3 to 6, man. Watch all the shows, man, on 104.5 The Zone, but specifically 3 to 6, man. Uh, 3HL, Brent Daughter and the mayor, and Babsy, Don Davenport on that with me. The Boom Boom Room, you can go check them out, man. Some past interviews, I think people will love them. Um, right down YouTube, type it in Ron Slay. You go to Boom Boom Room, Boom Boom Room hoodies. Be back, man. We're about to get cold outside, so we're gonna get all colors back in. You can hit me in the DM, the Ron Slay on Twitter, the Ron Slay on Instagram, and I respond. We get them out to you, man. There you go. This this was totally awesome, Ron. We can't say uh, thank you enough. We really appreciate you coming on. No doubt, man. Appreciate you guys.